Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, okay, good. So, so yeah, so we have this uh, mixed case study as one of the case studies in the Econose project. Um, and the idea here is to try and apply some of the, the approaches um, about integrating biological knowledge to mixed fisheries. And so this case study actually has some kind of different case studies within it. And so one of these is um, about uh, stocks in the Cyclades in the Mediterranean. Sorry, I'm just using the microphone. And um, so here we have three species, hake, mullet and bream. And uh, this is a kind of an example of what Samu was talking about in his uh, talk on Monday, <coughs> that we have uh, quite a data pool system. So we're just using some um, data on um, annual catches, total catching biomass, um, but we're trying to kind of build a biolog biologically realistic model of the population dynamics, and also to be um, honest about the uncertainty. So we're using this uh, general population dynamics model and having uh, priors for lots of the parameters there. And so we have a lot of uncertainty, basically, about the dynamics. And so here, um, some of the focus was on trying to synthesize um, information um, about the biology from related stocks, for example, using uh, meta-analysis approaches, and also looking at using um, expert opinion, for example, to inform selectivity. And then we have uh, another case study um, in the Finnish archipelago sea about pike perch and pike. Um, these support important recreational fisheries, and these species are um, different in the amount of data that's availability, available. And here we've used some um, mark recapture analyses to try and get priors for some of the population dynamics parameters from the tagging data. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about this uh, third um, kind of case study, and this is about sea trout and migratory whitefish in the Gulf of Bosnia. So this work is still ongoing, but I'm just going to tell you what I've done so far and a bit about the approach and what's kind of planned for the next steps. So a bit of background, these are both uh, commercially valuable species, and um, now a lot of the populations are maintained by stocking. So sea trout are actually captured as bycatch in coastal uh, gillnet fisheries for whitefish. And uh, sea, sea trout, uh, lots of the stocks are threatened. And in fact, in the Gulf of Bosnia, there are only three rivers left with natural, naturally re reproducing stocks. So the aim of this case study overall is to look at the effect of different manage management actions on those stocks and also to start to look at options, um, kind of management options that would um, allow restoration of wild sea trout stocks. Okay, so first I'm going to talk a bit about um, a hierarchical Bayesian micro capture model that we've been using to estimate fishing mortality rates um, and migration and survival rates for sea trout. So just tell you about the model structure and also the priors and, and where we get those priors from. And then the second part of the talk will be about the population dynamics model. So um, also talking about the priors for that model and then the next steps in this analysis. Okay, so here's, uh, yeah, so we're looking at Finland, so we're looking at these uh, study populations in the Gulf of Bosnia, and the data we have for the microcapture model are um, data from Carlin tagging experiments that from the late 1980s up to 2012. Um, we have these two rivers, so this one here is uh, Lestijoki, it flows into the Bosnian Bay, and then this one, here we have the Isayoki River. So we have some microcapture data from both of these uh, rivers. So here's a, a kind of diagram illustrating the structure of the microcapture model. So the, the uh, sea trout are released actually into the river as uh, age two uh, smolts. And I didn't say it on my last slide that these, are, these tagged fish are all um, reared, so they've all been stocked. They're not wild or from naturally reproducing stocks. Okay, so then we have some natural mortality in the river, and the model has two age groups, uh, fishing mortality in the river here, and then um, there's pro probabilistic uh, smultification, at which, at which point we assume that the fish migrate to the sea. Um, and then we also have these natural mortality, and based on discussions with the uh, experts, 
we have this higher natural mortality for the, the first year after smultification. And then we have fishing at sea. So we have uh, these, these are also um, important species in recreational fisheries. So we have four uh, fishing fleets here, two recreational, one nets and lines, and then these two commercial fishing fleets, gill nets and five nets. And then we have probabilistic maturation. Um, so these are anadromous fish, and then they're maturing, returning to the river, and we have also river fisheries and natural mortality. And sea, sea trout actually have quite a complex life history, so there's also a component of the population that's a resident in the river and they don't migrate to the sea, but in this analysis we're just concentrating on the, the migratory part of the population. So in the Bayesian mark recapture models, we have uh, priors from different sources, and actually lots of them um, come from a listation of expert opinion, which we just heard about in the last presentation. So for example, and we used expert knowledge to learn about uh, migration probabilities by age and also survival probabilities and the, the tag reporting rate, which is the proportion of recaptured tags that actually get um, reported or sent back to Finnish game and fisheries. And then for the, the tag shedding rate, the rate at which tags are, are lost from fish, uh, we used a literature review for species with a similar body shape. And so this model has a hierarchical structure. So we're assuming that there's some similarities between the, the stocks in different rivers. And so this was applied to the migration and survival probabilities. And then, so for the recreational fisheries, there's quite actually a lot of uncertainty about the, the effort level and catches and the effort, the data are only collected every two years. So here we've uh, basically imputed the missing values of fishing effort, and this is just done using a, a hierarchical model for the effort. And so we learn about the missing effort data from the observed values and also from the, the prior effort catchability, which is updated within the model. And then, okay, also, as Sammy was saying, this kind of choice of the likelihood or the observation model is, is kind of somewhat subjective and it, it kind of reflects maybe the views of some experts or some analysts often. And here we've just looked at the effect of using different observation models for the recaptures. And this plot here is just showing, um, so counts of recaptures for releases in 1996. And here the, the red line showing the observed number of recaptures and this black line showing the 95% uh, posterior predictive distribution for recaptures from the model, and this is for recaptures by recreational nets, actually. Um, and yeah, so basically the, we compared here just uh, um, a multinomial likelihood and then an over-dispersed Dirichlet multinomial likelihood, and um, it turned out that this over-dispersed likelihood is, is much, would be much better at predicting a replicate data set based on this deviance information criterion value. So here, this is probably too small, but I just want to show you this. We're using this uh, elicitation tool that was developed within the Econose project to elicit these, uh, these beta prior distributions for different parameters in the mark recapture model. So for example, the one at the top here is the probability of death from natural causes in the first year at sea. So the experts have given some uh, quantiles for this dis distribution, and then we've uh, fitted a beta distribution. And so um, this questionnaire, or this, this elicitation, was made with three, three different experts. And so then we want to combine the prior knowledge of different experts to come up with a prior that we can use in the mark recapture model. And so here, we've used this Bayesian model averaging approach. And so here, in this example, we're looking at the, the tag reporting rate of professional fishermen. And we have uh, three different expert priors here. So this red line is, is, is the same as this one up here. And then this dashed line is the second, and this, this is the third expert. And then this, this kind of thicker black line is the, the distribution that we get after we combine the distributions from the different experts. And this uh, Bayesian model averaging approach is really nice because it kind of, if you have, so here we have these experts are, are kind of, they have very overlapping distributions and they're, they're, they're kind of in agreement about 
to some extent about the tag reporting rate. But in some situations, we might have, for example, a distribution here and then one over here. And then, then we have to think, what's the sensible way to combine those? Because if we just take an average, we might get something that's just in the middle, and that doesn't actually have support from either expert. But with this approach, it's nice because it, it kind of propagates the uncertainty that comes from different expert opinions. Okay, so this is just uh, an example of some results from this market capture model. So we have, uh, so these are, again, are in, as, uh, similar to an earlier talk. We have um, box plots here that show the 95% uh, posterior probability interval for fishing, annual fishing mortality rates. And so on the left, we have commercial gillnet fishing mortality, and on the right, we have total fishing mortality, which is just comes from summing up the fishing mortality from all the different fleets. And the blue, the blue uh, boxes here are for ages three plus, so, and the, the black ones are for age two. Okay, and then we have, uh, I think this is Iso Yoki River at the top and Lesti Yoki River. Okay, so then now we have these, uh, we've learned using use the tagging data to learn about fishing mortality rates and catchability and survival and migration. And we can now, um, now we want to build a, a kind of a life cycle model that describes the population dynamics. So here I'm using the general population dynamics model again. And uh, this GPDM allows you to structure the population by different uh, variables. So now I'm structuring it by life history stage and age. So we have these different life history stages, smolts, first time spawners, mature fish, and repeat spawners. And each of those stages has age structure. And then I've taken these probabilities for the migration rates and survival from the market capture model. So then we also need priors for some other parameters, for example, um, to, to uh, describe the stock recruitment dynamics. And those come from literature review and uh, expert opinion. And then we also need a description of uh, growth and, and how weight changes with length. And so this, this information was synthesized using Bayesian meta-analysis. So just some more detail about this uh, meta-analysis model. So now this is for, to derive price for the growth parameters. So this is using another um, tool that was developed within Econose, which is a, a hierarchical Bayesian model from Pulkinen et al. Et al. Um, to learn about parameter estimates. So we're using, so if you have, for example, a species that you don't know much about the growth parameters, you can compile estimates from other uh, stocks or even species, and then um, you get basically uh, information flow through the hierarchical structure that updates your priors. So this approach actually explicitly models the correlations, and, and this can lead to, to kind of extracting more knowledge from the data. So you end up with a more precise posterior distribution, but it, it turns out that this is there's some kind of uh, difficulties with implementing the approach. So because we're applying this a lot in the mixed case study, we've just developed this model to change uh, the prior for the covariance matrix because the parameters are assumed to come from a multivariate uh, normal distribution. And so this, this is just sh showing the, uh, the dash. We have different parameters, for example, L infinity here and K, the growth parameters, the, this is a posterior predictive distribution, for example, for a new stock that we don't have any observations for. Uh, the blue line is the simulated uh, data value. The red line, dash red line is the prior, and the black line is the posterior. And then these are the same thing for correlations over here. So this, this approach at least seems, seems to work OK, and perhaps we need to test it a bit more. But here are the... Uh, now priors and posteriors for the sea trout. So we have uh, growth parameters, um, length weight parameters, and again, this dashed red line is the prior. And then here we have some prior and posterior distributions for the correlations between those parameters. So if stock recruitment parameters, um, so we did a literature review 
to compile estimates of uh, egg to smolt survival from rivers in the UK and France. And then because you know, we expect the conditions in Finnish rivers to be different, these have been, we've also had to use some expert opinion to give some ideas about, for example, do they, do they expect the egg survival to be higher or lower in the Finnish rivers? And so, so we came up with this uh, prior distribution for egg to small survival. And perhaps later we'll do some kind of more formal analysis, like a, a meta-analysis, but this is what we have for now. Um, and then again, smoke production potential, which is a kind of the, the maximum smoke production that we could get in these rivers under kind of ideal conditions. This also comes from, from expert knowledge. So when we um, add all these things together, this is uh, using the GPDM again, we get this kind of emergent prior for the population dynamics. So you can see, so here we have uh, egg production, smoke recruitment. Um, this is abundance of uh, mature sea trout in the sea and repeat spawner abundance in the river. And so just running this model for 30 years, we kind of reach some kind of equilibrium population structure here. And so there's no fishing mortality here, but this is basically you consider, we can consider this as a prior about the population dynamics that kind of brings together all this information from expert opinion and meta-analysis and so on. Yes, so, so this is kind of what's been done so far. And the next steps will be to try to develop this mark recapture model for sea trout. And so one thing uh, is that the, the, the uh, tagged fish are stocked and reared, and we want, to, we want to learn about wild fish. So for now, we've just kind of uh, tried to base the parameters in the population dynamics or use expert opinion to inform the differences between wild and reared sea trout. But actually, I think there are also some, some data, so we might be able to use the data to really learn about the differences. And this is something that Polina showed earlier in her talk, that, for example, there's a clear difference in survival at sea between wild and reared fish. Um, we have some information about growth from the tagging data, and it seems that there, there are two kind of modes in growth, and, and seems quite likely that these are from the, the migrant fish that stay in the sorry the, the resident fish that stay in the river and the migrant fish that go to the sea and, and feed there. So perhaps we can use this information as a, a kind of covariate to inform the migration probabilities. And finally, um, it seems like. Yeah, it, it could be worth trying to model the correlations between parameters because in sea trout it's been shown that there are correlations, for example, between migration probabilities, uh, migration to the sea and migration back to the river, and also between migration probabilities and survival. And then this uh, sea trout population dynamics model needs some development. So, um, so then the idea would be to bring in fishing mortality and also possibly to to look at, to try to um, do like a stock assessment and estimate depletion, so then we can evaluate options for restoring these stocks. <coughs> and a similar approach will be applied for whitefish. So we have some uh, tagging data from this river Kalajoki in Finland, which is close to the Lestijoki River. And so it'd be a similar idea to estimate catchability, uh, migration rates, and natural mortality. And I think, yeah, so in, in the mixed fisheries analysis, the ultimate idea is, as I said earlier, that we want to evaluate different management strategies. And if, if we have catchability estimates from the tagging data, that's a nice way to see if we regulate, for example, the fishing effort, what will the fishing mortality be for these different sea trout stocks and for the white, uh, white fish stocks. And then we could ask questions like, what's the optimal level? level of effort in terms of whitefish yields um, and sea trout yields, but also rebuilding these sea trout stocks. So I think one of the challenges here is that we need probably some kind of objective function and we need to know what are the value of these stocks to, to kind of come up with a, an optimal level of fishing effort. 
And these stocks are utilized by lots of different stakeholder groups. So then we need to try and somehow um, elicit how, how they value these resources and, and kind of combine those to really evaluate the management options for this fishery. Okay, that's, that's it. Thank you.